Good evening. This is nutritional pharmacist Melissa Galladay. I am a registered pharmacist with a passion for nutrition. Really happy to be here with you this evening. And I want to let you know that tonight we're going to be discussing acne. And there's a lot of things we can learn about it. Acne affects a lot of different people. So all different age groups, um, anywhere ranging from, you know, probably 12. There's people that have acne when they get older in life. So we're going to discuss acne. And while we're waiting for a few more people to join us, I want to remind all of you that we, when we do these Facebook Lives, we're actually doing them on multiple platforms. We do them on Zoom, which right now I have the Zoom platform open, which is a number you can call. You can dial in directly and punch in a PIN number and be live with me right now. I have somebody live on the line with me. And um, go ahead and say hello, person on the line. Hello. Excellent. So what's fun about the Zoom platform is let's say you just have to dial in. You, you know, that's an option. And we do try to get that information out. Of course, Facebook isn't the only way that we um, get that information out. So FYI, we do the Facebook Lives three times a week. In addition to doing simultaneously, we're doing the Zoom platform. And you can dial in, punch in a PIN number, and ask me questions directly through voice like Rebecca Kozak just demonstrated, or you can, while you're watching the Facebook Live, you can start writing questions into the comments down there, and I'll be happy to answer those while we're hosting these calls. Calls are Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Tuesdays, we do two calls, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Thursday, we do the same thing, 6 p.m. Pacific time. And if you, by chance, miss me, you can still post a comment on any of these videos or directly message me in Facebook or at Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, at nutritionalpharmacist.com, and I would be happy to help you out. My goal is for you to learn about your own personal biochemistry and about how that works and ways you can nutrient yourself, empower yourself, learn about your own body so you can live a long, vital life. That, that's what my goal is. And as a Western medical practitioner, I saw very often people getting sicker and sicker, that they weren't getting better in the traditional system. So they would start with a one medication and they would end up on three to four, five medications. And I would actually pe watch people physically get sicker moment by moment. And uh, it was heartbreaking. And what pharmaceuticals do, if they're used in chronic conditions, they actually hurt your body. They interrupt biochemical pathways. They don't allow you to repair and regenerate what's natural that you would naturally do if you weren't ingesting a toxic substance because that's what the majority of pharmaceuticals are. Nevertheless, I am a huge supporter of acute medicine. We do need it. What's happened in our, you know, if you will, the, the first world nations, you know, medical care at this point, you know, if I was to break a bone or had an emergency, the odds of me surviving are very high. And I, I admire that. I, I love ER docs. I love ER nurses. There's a lot of amazing things that happen in hospitals that would not be happening if it wasn't 2017. So very amazing where medicine has gone. Yet at the same time, there's some twists and turns in there that I do not support. And that's why I'm here. That's why I do this. And I'm committed to this. And um, so yay. So here I am today. And we decided tonight we're launching into what we're referring to as the A to Z of diseases. And what we're going to start with is acne. And Rebecca and I are going to be creating a list, and we'd love for you guys to post some diseases you'd like me to talk about. And, you know, I'll talk about it. And I'm going to teach you the biochemistry of it and, and what you can do to change it. So we're going to start with acne, and like I said, it does affect people, you know, I remember I was about 12 when I started getting acne, and I was one of those people that consistently kept acne, um, I have a whole acne story, but I had a really bad acne, and it was, um, I, I really struggled with it, I, I was embarrassed by it, and, and it always seems like my zits would always, they would arise like right here on the end of my nose, or you know, right there on my third eye, it was... I always got the magical zit at the worst time. So for those of you out there suffering with that, I, I sympathize and I'm here to teach you some things that you can do. And also if you know people that suffer from it, teenagers, other family members, people, 
you know, also you could be, you could have acne in your 30s or 40s. So if you know anybody that suffers from it, you could share this video with them and they could learn a little bit about what their biochemistry needs to modify that. So what acne is, is it's a response in your skin telling you that something's going on and you need to change it up. Anything that happens in your body is actually a sign telling you there needs to be some changes made. So with acne, we're definitely looking at the digestive tract and what we're eating. I mean, that's just a big, big flag. Something, you know, there's some metabolism issue. There's a fat metabolism issue. There's a sugar metabolism issue. We don't know which one, but we know there's a metabolism issue going on. The skin's not able to repair. The skin is one of the first warning signals a lot of us will get about what's going on in our body and so with this acne what's happening is there's some sort of fat sugar imbalance there's not a, a metabolic processing that needs to take place so the first thing you want to look at is you want to look at what you're eating and you definitely want to look at things such as fast food and you want to look at things such as a lot of sugar if you cut out sugar You'll be amazed at how quickly things will reverse in the acne situation. I also want you guys to know that those of you listening out there might say, well, I did cut out sugar. I went to diet soda. I only drink diet monster drinks. I only drink, I only chew sugar-free gum. There's a lot of sugar-free options and that's not going to cut it. The artificial sweeteners are equally as damaging to your biochemistry and to your whole metabolic pathways. So when I say cut out sugars, I also mean artificial sweeteners. You need to not eat those. You need to stop, you know, cease and desist, if you will, on the sugar, the sweet things, and start changing it. And as we know, one of the biggest motivators is, yeah, having acne, having something that actually, is, you know, visually, you know, other people can see. And that, that's a motivator for a lot of younger people to make some changes. So in a way... I think acne is kind of great. It's a little bit of a blessing. But what ends up happening is we'll usually take our kiddos to the doctor and the doctor will put them on a low dose antibiotic or they might put them on a topical antibiotic that then will, of course, mask the whole red flag saying, hey, change things up. And the person will continue taking these low dose antibiotics not noticing, you know, the acne will go away. But one of the things you need to understand about low dose antibiotics is they actually disrupt, they continue to disrupt the digestive tract. They kill the probiotics, they damage the mucosal lining, and long-term use of these things are very dangerous, honestly. They're, they hit your health hard and they can have long-term consequences. So again, masking the symptoms, that's one of the things we talk about a lot when we discuss pharmaceuticals, is they're utilized to mask the symptom, and but nevertheless, that biochemical process is actually still going on. So in the case of the you know, mal um, meta metabolism of the fats or the sugars, that, that's not stopping just because you, um, you know, are taking an antibiotic. That's now just, you know, what the antibiotic's doing is it's stopping the anti, it's, it's an antibacterial, so it's stopping the bacteria growth, but it's still not addressing the actual metabolic response that's going on. So what I recommend for people, again, we discussed the diet, we discussed the sugars and the fats, not eating fast food, not eating a lot of sugars, that, that, right off the bat, like that's a couple of freebie things you can do just to experiment. You definitely want to look at food allergies, things such as gluten, uh, wheat, flour, which is gluten, rye, spelts, barley, those all have gluten in them. You also want to look at things that contain lactose, which would be cheeses, sour creams, yogurts. I usually encourage my patients to get off cow milk, dairy, and start exploring goat or sheep. Those two animals are less um, exposed to a lot of harmful growth hormones and pesticides, etc. They're, and they're more humanely treated usually. So you're supporting something else, but also the, um, the lactose in those uh, products from those animals are, are less disruptive to the human gut. There's a lot of reasons for that, but I would definitely say the way that cows are treated in this country, as far as hormonally and um, pesticide-wise, you know, you, you just really want to try to stay away from, if you will, conventional dairy. So lactose and, of course, uh, looking at wheat, gluten, etc. 
then if you were wanting to explore, hey, I want to get on nutrients and I want to start uh, nutriating what, you know, hey, what do I need to take? I would definitely recommend, you know, the full, the fuller the spectrum, the better. But we will just cover a few specialized nutrients. And I never advise, you know, cherry picking nutrients. And what I mean by that is you do need to cover your minimum wage, if you will, of all the nutrients you need in your body. But what's fun about biochemistry is when we get to pick and learn exactly what individual nutrients do. So there's a vitamin, it's B6, it's known as pyridoxine. I would recommend taking 100 micrograms of that at least three times a day. I would also um, recommend a zinc. You'd like to do that at um, 50 milligrams a day. And that's really going to help uh, modify. Zinc's an amazing mineral. It does so much for the skin. It does so much for the immune system. I, I take zinc. I've, I've taken it for years in the form of zinc lozenges. I, I first was exposed to it with um, Zycam. It would stop me from getting sick. It just changed my life. Zinc was a game changer. I have so much more I could say about zinc. Oh, and you know, we're doing diseases, but I think after that we're going to do minerals, you know, A to Z on the minerals. What do you think about that, Rebecca? I think that would be awesome because there are so, so many minerals people don't even know about and how they affect our bodies. Agreed. I think that, yeah, that's going to be a blast. I can't wait. And I really want to dig deep into the biochemistry for you guys so you can really understand intricately what this does. I, it's something that I, I find very fun and fascinating. So, so yeah, back to the zinc. Zinc does a lot. It modulates a lot of, you know, the fat synthesis, the fat, um, you know, all these processes in the skin. So that's, that's really going to help with the acne that we're discussing. And then for you want to look at your essential fatty acid intake, you want to make sure that you're getting enough essential fatty acids. And we talk a lot about those. Uh, EFAs, they're also known omega-3s. You'll hear that a lot. You can get omega-3s in your diet. It's hard. you gotta, you got to be diligent. You have to get organic sources of cold fish, cold water fish. And to get the concentrations you need, excuse me, it's pretty hard. So, you know, you're going to need to supplement in this day and age. So getting a, a high quality fish oil, omega-3 capsule, it's really going to help regulate the uh, metabolism of the skin and help clear up that acne. And then also vitamin A. Vitamin A is a very important component of the skin health and all, many reactions that take place in the skin keeps the skin very young and uh, it's what gives the skin a lot of its elasticity. And so dosing potentially up to, you know, 300,000 units a day on, on beta carotene could, could be helpful for the skin. And um, yeah, so that's kind of a brief recipe. And I don't want you guys cherry picking. And, and if you're not sure what I mean by that, you know, we went over it lightly in the sense of these are the nutrients that are really important to the skin health. But you really just can't take zinc and expect everything to, uh, you know, remedy. Yet I do want you to know that those nutrients I covered, acne is a sign that you are definitely deficient in those nutrients. So you need to get those nutrients on board, and you can do it in a variety of ways. And so that that's kind of what the brief overview of acne. And if there are any questions or comments, I always appreciate that. So we're wrapping up, and it's been really fun as usual and I'm wondering if we see any questions Rebecca are you online also can you see any questions at all uh, yes I am online um, I do have a question you had mentioned fast food what what is wrong with fast food I mean everybody's so busy and it's just so easy to drive through grab something and go away I know, isn't it? So it's almost unethical. It's like a trick. There's a lot of things wrong with fast food. Number one, there's no nutrients in fast food. Fast food is made from, honestly, plastic, artificial chemicals, weirdo leftover meat parts, weirdo leftover milk. I, there's just no nutrients in, in fast food. Uh, you know, if you want to support something that's fast and has nutrients, I would look into uh, spending your money at a Chipotle. They do use real food and it's fast, you know, faster, if you will. Um, but yeah, fast food is chemically designed by food chemists. And I used to work in a, not a Taco Bell, but I worked at a Taco John's. I, I take that back, my best, my best friend worked there. 
Um, and she told me what goes on there. And then my sister ended up working, and I'm pretty sure to talk about, I worked at a McDonald's, and I saw the food arrive. Now, back when I was working at a McDonald's in the late 80s, we did get salads. There was really greens in the salads, and I, and I guess you can't, you can't really mess up a salad at McDonald's. But where you mess it up is what the dressing that we put on it, the, the croutons, all those additive things that they give you in the in the shakers there's a lot of gluten in there there's a lot of artificial chemicals chemicals that actually get you high and they're addictive if you ever eat a food and you just can't have enough of it you need to be suspicious because that's definitely a chemical signal that something in that food that's making you want more of it um, I'm sure most of us have had experience with like Dorito ranch chips if you have one or potato lays you have one you just want another one that's a sign that there's something chemically added to that food to make you want to continue eating it. But back to the Taco Bell story, the meat arrives powdered and not granulated powder, you guys, like straight up, straight powder, like smooth powder, and then you put water in it. This is crazy if you think about the chemistry of that. You put water in it and you stir it up. Not only does it turn into meat that looks like meat, it actually coagulates into those little meaty chunks. I mean, that's some weird Frankenstein chemistry. Wouldn't you agree, Rebecca? Yeah, that's pretty, pretty nasty. Right, and then the beans, same thing. The beans were powder. The uh, sour cream was is powder. I think the only thing that arrives, as you would expect, you know, the tortillas, uh, you know, the corn tortillas, etc., and of course, you know, the lettuce and the tomatoes. Um, but again, those vegetables have been heavily processed, unethically processed. You know, farm, farm workers work in that stuff. They have to get exposed to chemicals to grow insane uh, produce ratios. You know, they, but I had a friend just recently say he saw something on the news where there were these farm workers out there growing lettuce and, and, and spraying stuff to grow the lettuce, and they were in hazmat suits. And this is a person that's in... Um, Oh, I, he's in a physicist profession and he understands toxic chemicals but he said you know I just saw that and I thought this isn't right and it wasn't even a, uh, a full on you know ex commenting on the hazmats it was more just some little snippet where they were showing fields of green and there's guys in hazmat suits working on your food that doesn't make sense and that needs to change and so you networking with your local farmers you planting your own garden and learning to grow your own food is so critical in your own health and in your own just experience of life. I mean, you know, a lot of us know that. It's a pleasure to, to at least do that a couple times or, or to assist other people in doing it. You know, co-op gardening or community gardens, there's a lot of those around and they're a wonderful experience to be a part of. So I, I hope that answers your question. You know, fast food, it's fast, yet that's not how we're built to eat. You know, we. We do want to get, if we're going to eat fast, we definitely want it to be nutrient dense. So the remedy for something that's quick and on the go is, you know, smoothies and, and various, you know, eggs, you know, nice organic eggs that you cook with butter. You know, you could do that in four or five minutes at home and you can sit down and eat something like that. So, so for those teenagers out there suffering from acne, you know, there's remedies, and for elder people too, I know that a lot of people can have acne later in life, you know, in their 30s and their 40s, and, you know, there's, total, there's totally help. So, it's again, you want to look at what you're eating. And number one, you guys, I mean it, acne, put a big equal sign and put sugar. If you got acne, you got a sugar imbalance, you got a sugar metabolism issue, you cut sugar out, I guarantee it, your acne is going to get better. So again, it's been a pleasure to be here with you today, and we'll be back to, um, Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. We definitely want to hear from you. Please share this with anybody you know that has had acne and is suffering from it, and, and we'd love to help them out. So thanks a lot. Bye-bye.